Hey guys, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. Beautiful, rich, famous, and successful women are sometimes very unhappy in their personal lives. Just think of the story of the Turkish arabesque performer Belgin Saril Mischer, known under the pseudonym Bergen. The most famous woman in Turkey, famous all over the world, was tortured by her husband for many years. He beat her, disfigured her face with acid, and finally shot her. Our heroine today is Ecuadorian performer, television actress, music producer, and lingerie designer Edith Rosario Barmeo Cisneros, better known as Sharon La Hechichera, or simply Sharon. With her own hard work, perseverance, and talent, she has reached heights that one could only dream of, becoming one of the top stars of Ecuador and Latin America in general. Sharon dreamed of simple female happiness, family comfort, and a quiet harbor where she could return every evening and just be herself. But the man she loved, her husband and the father of her child, saw in her only an inexhaustible source of finances for his trouble-free and carefree life. It was this man who eventually became the culprit of the death of the nation's favorite in 2015. But despite the wide publicity, the final point in this high-profile case has not been put to this day. Sharon La Hexera, Biography, Early Years. The future star was born in 1974, March 28th, in the large metropolis of Santiago de Guayaquil, located on the Guayas River in the province of Ecuador. The full name given to the girl at birth sounds like Edith Rosario Barmeo Cisneros. She grew up in a simple and rather modest family, where in addition to her, there were two other children. Soon after the birth of her daughter, the whole family moved to the city of Duran, where the future queen of Technocumbia spent her childhood and youth. Edith, from an early age, was a bright, active, and very artistic girl. At home, she was affectionately called Charo, or Charito, and it was this nickname later became part of her stage name. As a child, Edith was a big fan of the popular American comedy television series Bewitched, another name, My Wife Bewitched Me. Her idol and object of imitation was the main star of this show, the cult actress Elizabeth Montgomery. Then, the same girl began to call herself Charo Enchantress and dreamed of repeating the success of her favorite actress. From an early age, she became interested in music and loved to sing. She had a good musical ear and not bad vocal data, but to call them outstanding was difficult. Nevertheless, the girl conquered everyone with her natural charisma, artistry, and the ability to reincarnate. At the age of eight, she managed to win at the City Children's Festival, performing compositions Fox in Kaiko, as well as Los Angeles. By the time she graduated from school, she had already won several awards at city and regional music competitions. She dreamed of becoming a famous singer and conquer the big stage, but her parents were skeptical of these dreams. They believed that the heiress is not talented enough to become a star, and since their family has no connections in show business, the career of a performer is not worth dreaming about. Edith, listening to the advice of her family, decided to go to university, choosing a more practical and down-to-earth profession as a public relations specialist at the State University of Guayaquil at the Faculty of Communication Sciences. But her dream of becoming a singer did not go anywhere. Edith believed that everything has its time, and she should wait a little to choose the most appropriate moment, path to fame. While studying at university, Edith took on any part-time job and tried herself as an assistant teacher in a kindergarten, a seller of sweets and Morocco, a traditional Ecuadorian drink, as well as a dancer in the local creative team, performing at the warm-up of visiting popular artists and musical groups. But all this was only to save money, which she later used to record her debut music album, Braveheart, which was released in 1998. In 2005, the singer released her third studio album and received the prestigious award as the first solo techno-cumbia artist in the country to top the music charts. In 2010, she released her fourth album entitled Poco a Poco, and two years later, her fifth album was released, which unfortunately became the last one in her life and career. From the early 2000s until her tragic death in 2015, Sharon was the author, host, and co-host of many entertainment programs and TV shows on TV channels in Ecuador and other Latin American countries. She has been active in television series and has also worked as a public relations specialist for Canela TV. 
In addition to a successful career on the music scene and television, Edith also decided to try herself as a fashion designer, creating seductive lingerie by her own sketches. And in this case, she also waited for success, and the brand she created quickly gained popularity among women almost all over America. For whatever business did not take Sharon, she everywhere succeeded, achieving great heights and recognition. Personal Life of the Performer Despite the dizzying success on stage, television, and fashion business, the personal life of one of the main stars of Ecuador was not so rosy. She did not like to touch on this topic in conversations with the press and in every way avoided such questions from journalists. However, Sharon La Hexera was constantly in the crosshairs of numerous photo and video cameras, so to hide anything from prying eyes was simply impossible. It is known that in the mid-90s, the aspiring performer was romantically involved with an entrepreneur and music producer named Eduardo Gray. For several years, the couple was officially engaged, but the wedding never came to the wedding, although Edith gave birth to a daughter from her lover. She named her heiress Samantha. The daughter inherited the entrepreneurial vein and artistry of her mother, also becoming quite a famous performer and actress. But to surpass her mother, she failed, despite all the efforts and available connections. Soon after parting with Eduardo, Sharon spun a new romance. This time her chosen one was a little-known television operator, with whom she met while working on one of the telenovelas. Their relationship developed rapidly, and after a short engagement, the couple played a modest wedding, trying to hide this event from others. But the news quickly became public, and the marriage itself lasted a short time. About the reasons for the sudden divorce of the performer preferred to keep silent. Later on, the artist had romantic relationships with a famous impresario named Pedro Francisco, then with a young dancer from the show ballet, who performed with her on stage, as well as with some of her star colleagues. Unfortunately, none of these romances did not have a serious continuation, and Sharon broke up with her boyfriends for various reasons. The performer herself did not want to comment on the events that took place in her personal life. She raised a daughter, engaged in career, but still hoped that one day in her life there will be a worthy, loving man. Relationship with Giovanni Lopez In 2009, the performer met a young man named Giovanni Lopez, who was more than 10 years younger than her. He was also a native of Ecuador, but as a child, together with his parents, emigrated to the United States. The family settled in New York City, where virtually all of Giovanni's childhood and adolescence took place. They first met during a large tour of the singer in the United States, but at that time their communication was limited to work, and Lopez himself helped with the organization of Sharon's performance. But probably, even then these two have already penetrated some sympathy for each other. In addition, it turned out that the young man was a longtime fan of the Queen of Technocumbia, and he was honored to have the opportunity to work with her personally. A year later, Giovanni decided to return to his native Ecuador. He brought with him the designs he had developed for artists, one of which he created specifically for Sharon. So began their collaboration, and almost immediately a stormy romance broke out between them. At the time of the beginning of this relationship, the performer was already 36 years old, and Giovanni was barely 24 years old. However, the 12-year age difference did not embarrass them at all and the couple did not care what people around them would think about it and how they will write about them in the press. Almost immediately, the lovers moved in together, deciding to live together. However, it should be noted that the parents and daughter of the performer treated her new chosen one very cautiously. Giovanni immediately they did not like it, and they decided that the young man twisted romance with the star solely for his own selfish purposes, and in fact did not love her at all, but only wanted to use. Sharon listened to the warnings of loved ones did not, because she believed that met the main man in his life, with whom they will live many happy years. Soon the couple married, and the couple began to think about the birth of a common heir. However, here they faced a problem, because the performer could not get pregnant. As a result, she decided to in vitro fertilization, and in May 2012, 38-year-old celebrity gave birth to a boy, who was named Brian Giovanni Lopez the abusive relationship. Giovanni only at first tried to be a caring and loving man on whom you can rely in everything. However, as soon as the couple concluded marriage and the performer became pregnant, 
the behavior of the young husband began to change rapidly, and he himself literally turned into a domestic tyrant. He no longer sought to earn money independently, and he was quite satisfied with the position of an Alphonse. He willingly spent his wife's money for his own needs, entertainment, expensive clothes, and care for his appearance. In addition, Lopez began to abuse alcoholic beverages and less and less often appeared at home, preferring to spend time with friends and mistresses. To all this, Giovanni began to openly insult his wife, pointing to her age and fading beauty. According to some reports, because of his offensive statements and remarks, Sharon decided to do a number of plastic surgeries to preserve her youth and look like her husband. In particular, the performer enlarged her breasts, did a lift, and several cosmetic manipulations. But all her efforts were in vain and did not help to return to the family peace and harmony. Queen of Technocumbia continued to work actively, starred in TV series, hosted entertainment shows, as well as preparing material for the recording of a new album. She tried to smile in public and claimed that she was finally happy in her personal life. However, only people close to her knew about how things were really going in her family. In early 2014, when little Brian was not yet two years old, the artist made the first serious attempt to break off the relationship with Giovanni. But he said that he would agree to give a divorce only if Sharon will give him half of his property and funds in her bank accounts, so that he, after the separation, could continue to lead an idle and carefree lifestyle to which he was used to. Sharon could not agree to these conditions, and so began to consult with lawyers how to dissolve the marriage, but at the same time, to keep the property and get full custody of their joint young son. By the end of the year, family life became simply unbearable, but the couple continued in public to play the role of happy spouses. One last family trip. On the eve of the new year 2015, the performer gave a number of festive concerts and also starred together with her star colleagues in several dedicated Christmas and New Year's events. After that, exhausted by work, the young woman decided to arrange a small vacation and go with friends, husband and son to the warm coast to relax a little, try to gather her thoughts, and decide what to do next. On the evening of January 3, 2015, the whole company decided to make the return trip. Since the journey was going to be long and they were traveling by car, the friends decided to follow each other and be in constant contact in case someone needed help. They decided to coordinate all the stops on the way in advance. Sharon had to drive the car that evening because her husband had been drinking alcoholic beverages all day. After a few hours, the company made a stop at a gas station and decided to have dinner there in a roadside cafe. During the meal, the singer and her young husband had a big fight because Giovanni again ordered a drink, although earlier he promised that he would not drink and get behind the wheel, giving Sharon the opportunity to rest and give time to the child. The couple argued for about half an hour and could not agree on who would drive the car. In the end, their friends could not stand it and asked if they could continue on their way. The singer said that she did not want to delay them because of her family problems so they could go on and he and Giovanni would have to stay a little longer. The friends reluctantly agreed and after another half hour headed to their car, leaving the couple at a roadside cafe. They had no idea that they would never see Sharon alive again strange accident. On January 4th, around half past two in the morning, the friends received a phone call from an agitated Giovanni asking them to come back because there had been an accident and Sharon might be dead. His words were a real shock because he did not specify details and it was completely unclear what had happened on the night road. By the time they returned, emergency services were already on the scene, trying to help the victim and reconstruct the picture of events. According to Giovanni, on the highway Ruta del Spondilus, near the Ecuadorian province of Santa Elena, at about 1.15 a.m., his wife got out of the car to calm her crying son and change his diaper. At that moment, another car crashed into her at a great speed. This car, without even stopping, sped away, leaving the scene of the accident. The young woman was thrown a few dozen meters to the side of the road from the impact. When the ambulance arrived, she was still alive, she was even taken to the hospital, but despite the best efforts of the doctors, Sharon soon died of massive injuries and internal bleeding. 
Giovanni was still drunk and confused in his testimony, and his story sounded rather strange and not quite logical. The police therefore decided to detain him until morning to question him in detail when he had sobered up. Lopez confirmed the words of friends that he and his wife quarreled all evening and admitted that, contrary to the promises and prohibitions of his wife, defiantly drank alcohol in order not to drive and piss off Sharon. Giovanni's Testimony He did not see the license plate number of the car that hit his wife. He did not even remember the make and only said that the car was white. There were no CCTV cameras on that stretch of road, no witnesses could be found, and the accident itself looked suspicious because Sharon did not even turn to the side of the road before leaving the cabin and did not make sure of safety. Although on a straight deserted road, any vehicle can be seen and heard from afar even at night. The longer the police tried to correlate all the facts with Lopez's story, the more what had happened resembled not an accident, but a premeditated murder. Giovanni was confused about the timing and chronology of events, could not remember details, but most interestingly, he could not explain why their car was turned in the opposite direction to the route they were traveling. After another interrogation, the husband of the dead singer was arrested as the main suspect in the case of her death. The autopsy results and Sharon's funeral. The autopsy revealed that the deceased woman's body had numerous injuries typical of a victim of a traffic accident. However, experts also found a clear and fairly deep mark on Sharon's chest that could have been left by a seatbelt. This fact raised even more questions and suspicions. Samantha, who spent New Year's holidays in the company of her boyfriend, learned about the tragedy from singer Sonia Ramos, a close friend and colleague of her mother. The girl could not believe that all this is really happening. She called her father, Eduardo Gray, and asked him to come to her as soon as possible, so that they went to Sharon's home together and began preparations for the funeral. After making all the preliminary arrangements, the body of the celebrity was taken to the Coliseum Cerrado Voltaire Paladines Polo in the province of Guayaquil. To say goodbye to one of the brightest stars of Ecuador came thousands of her friends, colleagues, and fans, also, this sad event was covered in all leading publications of the country, and on television was even announced a one-day mourning. Grief-stricken Samantha sobbed on the shoulder of her father, and near were her grandmother, grandfather, and uncle and aunt. All members of the deceased celebrity's family refused to comment in any way on what had happened. None of them accused Giovanni of what happened directly, but all of them showed their negative attitude towards him. An investigation and a surprise court decision. The case was one of the most high profile in Ecuador's history. It was widely covered in the press and jeopardized the reputation of the country's judicial system. The initial verdict literally shocked relatives and fans of the celebrity, and the revision of the case was delayed so much that the final point in this matter has not been put to this day. So, the white car, which presumably hit the artist, was found a few days later. The car had characteristic damage which, as experts have established, could be obtained as a result of an accident if you hit a person at high speed. The owner of the vehicle was a young woman named Tatiana Chavez, who categorically denied her involvement in the accident. However, the prosecutor's office opened two criminal cases at once, negligent homicide against Tatiana and premeditated murder against Giovanni. Lopez's story sounded extremely unconvincing. He was confused and contradicted himself, then recognized the car and even claimed to have seen the driver, then again doubted his own words, referring to alcohol intoxication. In parallel, the daughter and parents of the deceased also filed a statement, blaming the singer's husband for the incident. In their opinion, he never loved Sharon and had a motive for the murder in order to seize her money and get custody of the child. Samantha noted that her mother, shortly before the tragedy, consulted with lawyers about the dissolution of the marriage. Samantha also added that her little brother, who was the only witness to the incident, cries all the time and repeats, Daddy is bad. However, they did not involve the child as a witness in order not to cause the boy even more psychological trauma. After a detailed reconstruction of the events of that evening, Tatiana was ruled out as a suspect. By comparing the times and places where Tatiana had been seen before and after the accident, it was determined that she could not have been physically near the accident site at that time, 
and her car had been damaged in another accident. The other car was soon found to be the one that was found to have hit Sharon. The owner, Luis Correo, who had been driving that night, was arrested. By that time, he had already managed to replace the broken headlight and repair other body damage. But experts were able to establish that at the scene of the accident were found shards of glass from his car. Luis himself admitted to everything and said that Sharon literally fell under the wheels of his car, and he was so scared of what happened that he just drove away. In June 2015, Giovanni was found guilty of manslaughter of his wife. Experts proved that the injury on the woman's chest from the seatbelt was caused by her trying to protect herself before her husband pushed her out of the car right under the wheels of another car. However, the court verdict shocked Sharon's relatives and fans because her killer was only given three years. A retrial and attempts to appeal the new verdict. Such a lenient sentence caused a storm of excitement in the media and provoked a lot of protests across the country. People demanded fair punishment for the murderer of the star and national favorite. Already in July of the same year, the judges involved in the case were suspended and subsequently dismissed. The new judicial staff canceled the previous verdict, arguing that a number of administrative and bureaucratic mistakes had been made. All attempts by the defense lawyers to challenge the reversal of the verdict were unsuccessful. Luis Correro was cleared of responsibility for the singer's death, but he was still charged with fleeing the scene and attempting to conceal evidence. But Giovanni Lopez was brought to every court session under heavy security in order to avoid attacks on him fans of Sharon. In October 2015, the husband of the singer was found guilty of her death and sentenced to 26 years in prison. The court also took into account the evidence provided by Samantha evidence of Giovanni's cruel treatment of her mother, as well as the fact that he blackmailed his wife, demanding from her a fabulous sum for consent to divorce. A few months later, two appeals were filed at once. The prosecution demanded to increase the term to the maximum, 35 years, and the lawyers insisted on the illegality of the new sentence. However, both complaints were rejected. In 2021, Lopez again tried to challenge the court's decision. In addition, he stated that he was subjected to ill treatment in prison, and his rights were grossly violated. The prisoner even went on a hunger strike to pressure the court to release him. He argued that he was wrongfully convicted and the main perpetrator of the tragedy, Luis Correro, remained free. In 2023, Giovanni, already with a new lawyer, appealed again, once again hoping to secure his release. It is worth noting that in this difficult case, the composition of the judges was again changed due to the revealed abuse of power. Therefore, Lopez's defense hopes not only to challenge the verdict, but also to seek compensation for the years spent in prison. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell not to miss new stories from around the world. See you soon. Take care.